everyone, this is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno here today with Kennedy, Marie Harf, Lily Gilvaletta, and Dr. Mark Siegel. Now we begin with officials at the southern border and across the country bracing for an influx of up to 14,000 migrant crossings every single day when Title 42 expires in just five days. In El Paso, Texas, Fox News has captured exclusive video of thousands of migrants camped at the border in freezing temperatures. Shelters are overwhelmed. People on the ground there say they are already past their breaking point. And in New York City, Democratic Mayor Eric Adams is worried that the end of Title 42 will turn what's been a steady flow of migrants into a flood and suggesting that, quote, no one from the governor's office or the White House has offered a helping hand. Meantime, in Washington, the administration says it's prepared for what's to come, even though the president hasn't been to the border. And we are prepared. We have uh, we have done the work from this administration by securing record uh, record funding. We continue to see political stunts from uh, many Republicans out there, and that's not how we're going to fix uh, this issue. They want to uh, they want to uh, secure the border. We've been doing that work on our own. I think Kennedy, we call that an LIE. Yes. I, and what work are they doing? Whatever work they're doing, it's not working. So maybe they have to honestly assess what's going on and the number of people who are doing whatever they can to get into this country. You know, it's like, these are not legal channels. We all know that, they know that, but they know the door is essentially open. So the country can't support an influx of this many people, especially when the Health and Human Services Secretary is talking about offering health care uh, to people who are coming from other countries. You can't sustain a system like that. You cannot have an open door and a welfare state at the same time. Your country is going to collapse. So I, I want to know from her, I want to know a number. Like, at what point is it too much? At what point do we reach a breaking point? And I, they have to be much more honest with that because right now they are burying their heads in the sand. They are using words that mean nothing. Uh, there is not enough action to meet it. Uh, the situation because of that inaction is incredibly confusing. But the one thing people know, the one thing people are not confused about, it's that Title 42 ends in five days. Mm -hmm. And adding, I would say, Marie, to that mm -hmm. lack of honesty uh, includes going back to September when Karine Jean-Pierre blamed the prior administration as they blame everything on not having a secure border. Watch. It is a, broke, a, a broken system, the immigration system. And it was, um, it was decimated by the last administration. That is a fact. It was decimated by the last administration. Uh, what the last administration wanted was a border wall that was ineffective. The only thing decimated, Marie, in my opinion, was everything mm. the prior administration actually built to stymie that flow, including a positive relationship with President Obrador that included them managing their flows of migrants through their country from countries that were more south of that. To Kennedy's point, you can't have an open border and an enlarged welfare system, and it seems this administration refuses to acknowledge either. Well, first, Title 42 is ending because the courts have ruled it unconstitutional. I actually think there are a lot of people in the Biden administration who wish it was continuing because they know we have a crisis. There is not a lot that the executive branch on its own can do. Title 42 was never the answer. The system is broken. It is overtaxed. There is no place to put people who show up legally, who show up illegally. And so the real answer is the Congress needs to act. We've said this for decades. Democrats, Republicans have failed to do this. Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans took the House back in part by talking about immigration. So as they prepare to take over the House with a Democratic majority in the Senate, I am looking for both parties to actually put on the table real solutions, not just the border wall, not messaging bills that they all like for their bases, but actual results that maybe Congress can address. Because absent that, this is going to be continue to be an overtax system with no good or easy answers. Congress needs to step up here. Okay, but but Corinne Jean Pierre, I'm sorry to to inject here, but. Corinne Jean-Pierre is calling Republicans names. Yes, Democrats need Republicans right now, particularly on immigration. So she says that, and in the same sentence, she says that, you know, they're unhelpful and, and all they're doing is uh, launching political stunts. Well, so Republicans if you, if you say need that someone, we have an open border, right? And we don't. So each side is throwing political I, Okay, here. if this yeah. isn't an open border, 
I would like to know, what, and again, back to the point of what are the numbers? When do you consider it an open border? Because this is pretty much what it looks like. And let's throw up on the screen for a moment. So the White House Assistant Press Secretary, Abdullah Hassan, told Fox earlier, quote, what work have Republican officials done to secure the border besides vote against our record border funding requests and block plans to fix our broken immigration system? White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre called their bluff. Of course they're upset. Lily, the issue I have with this in part goes to actually Marie's fantastic point earlier, which is that Congress needs to act. Well, wasn't it Vice President Kamala Harris, who's also the border czar, who campaigned in part on fixing the broken immigration system. For the last two years, they've exactly. had the majority. What switch flips in January that wasn't already staunchly in their favor exactly. two years ago for them to actually perform all of those promises they made, all of that performative activism on the part of migrants that seemed to evaporate the second they secured office. And it's been decades of promises because President Obama did exactly the same thing. He ran on the promise of fixing immigration. Many of us Latinos, I am the product of a broken immigration system. I came with a student visa, and when you graduate even from your MBA here, you cannot adjust your status. Mm -hmm. But if you show up at the border, you can claim asylum, and you're put in the list, while those of us that are professionals or studied here have to go on a lottery of 65,000 viable visas. So it is broken and it hasn't been fixed since the Reagan administration. That was the last time we had a real immigration reform. There are ways to fix this from, you know, fixing the merit-based uh, qualifications for migrating to this country to actually having guest worker programs. I've been to the border. I think we have some photos here of my visits where a lot of these people, yes, are sneaking in, not up to anything good, but many want to be able to work, but we don't have a way to really have a guest worker program, which is what President Bush actually had supported many, many years ago. So it is a complicated wax of issues, but right now, ahead of the five days when this will stop, we don't have the infrastructure and I've seen it firsthand. And 130,000 of those migrants last year, this year alone, are unaccompanied minors mm -hmm. That's right. that right now are kids under our care. So it, they need to act, both sides need to stop playing with the political piñata of immigration yeah. and do something about it. The irony, doctor, is the fact that uh, prior to this administration taking the helmet, actually prior to the Trump administration, the wait time for legal immigration for waiting before courts is over two years. Right now it's two and a half, three years. So my point about the irony is that under the current administration's open border result, whether or not you call it open or not, it is an open, very porous border um, that is absolutely stressing our resources in all of those border towns and in every state to which fentanyl uh, flows and more. Um, but the whole point is, why, why wait two and a half years when you can get in illegally? Compl it's like the rampant crime here in New York. Why actually stand in line and pay for something when you can just take it because there's zero consequences? <laughs> the exactly. carrot on yeah. both sides is quite uh, obvious. It's exactly right. And, now, and they want to pave the path to citizenship in eight years now, the Biden administration, with that asylum card. Show the asylum card you're in, and then, and then we'll figure it out later. I want to talk about it as a public health crisis, though, because I don't totally agree that t Title 42 is purely a legal issue. I think it's political. I think when Title, title 42 was invoked by Robert Redfield, it, was, it got tremendous pushback from the Democrats who didn't want it. They didn't want it. And why was Title 42 brought in? Because of COVID, right? Because of the COVID pandemic. But guess where we are now? We're in a situation worse because of flu, COVID resurging again. What about clean water? What about those stations where the poor Custom and Border Protection agents are? They're overwhelmed. What about the hospitals? I've interviewed the medical director of McLaren Hospital. She says, forget about it. The hospital is overwhelmed. And it's not only infectious diseases, Emily. It's people getting hurt across the border, mm -hmm. people getting hurt rushing across across the border, they get injured, they get killed, flooding the hospitals, flooding the, the, the sanctuary places. I don't want to hear Eric Adams in New York talking about 30,000 migrants that are being sent up here. What about Texas? Texas is a mess at the border because of public health issues. Yeah, I mean, the, to, Marie had it accurate, however, that the reason Title 42 was extinguished was because it exceeded the scope of the authority of the executive branch. Right. And the reason why that everyone was advocating for it to remain in place is because there is simply nothing else in place that in any way can stymie that flow, especially with the I, extinguish of the Remain in Mexico and policy. With, and every with type Marie. of diplomacy 
um, interacting with those Central but and South Lily's American But we need something right. to I mean, replace Lily, it. We need okay, something but, to, but to Lily's be. But absolutely yeah, right when, when she talks about, you, you listed about three legislative fixes. Yes. And yes, you're right. This has exceeded the executive branch. And we see that every time there's an executive order from a president, it gets overturned by the courts. That's why Congress has to pick up exactly what you were talking about, merit-based immigration and a guest, a humane guest worker program exactly. so people can come and go and provide for their families uh, and participate uh, hundred, in uh, a healthy economy. A hundred, hundred right. years ago, when people came in across the border legally, they were checked medically. Yeah. They felt your throat to see if you had tuberculosis. Yeah. Right. So much. And amazing. We accomplished so much in just a few minutes. Really amazing did. what <laughs> Congress could do if they actually did their job. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.